Well, at the moment, there are two separate suggestions coming in, not just from uh, negotiators in Copenhagen and people involved in the world economy as well. And they are, one, put, put taxes on global transactions, every financial transaction. There's a separate suggestion of a carbon tax, which lots of BBC listeners have been getting in touch with us and saying we should do that as well. Two separate issues, but there's a principle at stake, and I know lots of you want to discuss it. Now, Raghu in Delhi has had to go. Thank you very much to you for your time. Let's bring in Isaac Muara, who's an independent development consultant. He's in... Nairobi, and we spoke to you a week and a half ago, Isaac. What do you make of how the summit has gone? And at the moment, we don't seem to be able to hear Isaac. Not to worry, I'll read you a couple of emails. Tapas in Nepal says, the summit should only have been made up of representatives from countries which actually can make a difference. That is to say, the big polluters. And Pear in Norway feels that those of you in the developed world are being very short-sighted if you oppose further donations to the cause in the developing world. He says, right now, I fear the global north doesn't really care what happens to Africa and the rest in the south, but what happens to all of us when millions of refugees start heading north. Let's go over to Krupa because we haven't spoken to you for a while. What's coming on the blog, Krupa? We've got Piam who's uh, written on our blog, worldhaveyoursay.com. He says, if in 80 years time things become so bad that parts of the world are devastated, I'd rather be able to say, at least I tried to do something. Mike has posted on Facebook, he says, even if they do have a deed in place, it will be meaningless. Mother Earth is in people's hands, not in the hands of politicians. And Andrew in Australia says, let's at least party whilst the, sh the ship sinks. Visit the blog at worldhaveyoursay.com and you can also follow us on Twitter. Krupa, thank you very much indeed. Well, let's pick up this idea of process. I'm looking at one email here. Donna Marie in Switzerland has said, the whole process was flawed. That is why we don't have a deal and they're still scrambling around. Daniel in Berlin, do you think actually this whole two-year process, which is built up to this hour really, has been proven to be fundamentally flawed? I think it's not uh, uh, the process itself that's uh, the problem, it's power, it's the realities of global politics. I mean, we've seen uh, this week uh, um, NGOs and civil society excluded from uh, uh, the negoti negotiations and the conference center for the first time. The climate negotiations have turned themselves into a kind of world trade organization. This reflects the fact that climate change is a very big economic issue, is now a very big security issue, and it's a good thing that these uh, world leaders are there and are finally addressing this issue. But it also means that a whole new kind of politics comes into the process, mm -hmm. and that so far has not been healthy at all. It's meant that there's been a lot of uh, uh, name-calling and a lot of issues not to do with climate change, but with who's going to rule uh, the 21st century have uh, um, polluted this process, uh, if, if you like. Forgive me, though, for, now being, need forgive me for being sick. Cynical, though, Daniel, what kind of politics doesn't involve name-calling? Isn't that the, the nature of the business? That, that might be the nature of the business, but it's not going to uh, uh, take us forward if we stop there. And uh, politicians have had the chance uh, uh, to move forward from that, especially because there's been an unprecedented amount of uh, uh, public mobilization. That the leaders are all there is due to the fact that civil society mm -hmm. has called for them to come, to go. Obama, only a, a few weeks ago, finally agreed to actually be there today rather than uh, on his way to the Peace Prize in, in Oslo. So the good news coming out of Copenhagen, I think, is that we now do have a global climate justice uh, movement that is mm -hmm. able to press politicians. The problem is it well, might only uh, uh, succeed for now in pressing politicians to agree any but kind Anna, of deal, but not yet Daniel, the let deal me interrupt that you we with need. Respect. You're saying there's a movement now which can press politicians. The evidence from Copenhagen suggests so far that this, this, this movement can make a lot of noise, but it doesn't seem to be able to influence the world's most powerful men and women to actually cut a deal. I think that we need a fundamental change in our mindset and the way we produce things that are sending these emissions into the, into the atmosphere. And that's a much, much bigger argument. So I think Daniel is correct in saying that. Uh, Guido has posted on worldhaveyoursay.com, what we need is a formula for emissions suitable for all nations. What's interesting is he says, forget about the past, we just need to deal with what we're emitting in the present. Roberto in Florida says, let the West set an example and the world will naturally follow. Well, at the moment, the world isn't following the developed world, but we'll see what comes out by the end of the day. Let's go from Florida and from the, uh, I don't know where Guido was actually, but let's go to the Maldives. We've got Mifra who's on the phone. Of course, the Maldives, one of the countries most threatened by global warming. Mifra, have you been impressed by how this summit has gone? Well, I can say the summit has at least brought up some attention, but as our president said, can we, can we negotiate with 
the mother nature if if we cannot sustain to even to this 1.2 degrees where will we end up are we going to be refugees we have every right to live our life we've been living in this small island for thousands of years so we have our every right to live this beautiful life over here but we're going to lose it if the western developed countries doesn't commit to these kind of commitments right now that's and, my argument and Mifra, if you could speak to those negotiators in copenhagen now what would you tell them to do in these last few hours so I would say if, you, if they cannot come to any conclusion right now or come to a deal right now, don't end it. Let's put some hope. Let's try and make another another agenda. Let's try and make it forward a bigger deal and make a bigger deal out of it. And let's try and make something. This is not for us. It's for the future generation, for the world to go on, and for small islands like us and the people are for us to survive. Let's Mi keep that in mind. Mifra, thank you very much indeed for speaking to us live from the Maldives. The bad news is we're not going to be able to get that line sorted to Nairobi, which is a real shame. Isaac, thank you very much for coming in. One last email. Janaski in LA says, why don't we just force countries to do what they're told, pick a group of individuals and let them decide what should happen? Julian in, in the States, do you ever think that could happen, that the UN could create a body which all governments must follow? Well, I just don't think that's the way global governance works. I think we're, we're only going to have effective action if we have all parties on the same page working together. And because really, that, that's how you get the most bang for your buck. Uh, you know, collaborating and, and moving towards a common goal rather than working against each other. Julian, thank you very much. It's the first time on World Have You Say. I hope it won't be the last. That's Julian L. Wong. Thank He's you. from the American Center for American Progress. He also blogs at the Green Leap Forward. Thank you to Daniel as well. We'll put his blog address up on the World Have Your Say blog. Good to speak to you, Daniel. And Anna, again, thank you for coming in. Please do come back on the show. I know you're going to be coming across to the center of London with me now for the BBC uh, World Service World Have Your Say program. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. Clearly, there are going to be many more developments in Copenhagen over the next few hours. You're going to get all of the latest news here on BBC World News. And if you want to continue commenting on what's happening, you can go to the blog or I'll speak to you on the radio in a couple of hours. Thanks for your company. I'll speak to you soon. Goodbye.